the regular doubling circuits, but coming from the interaction of the regular doubling circuits and the gap space, you get a nested vortice circuit. There's two of these circuits operating at a given instant. And whereas it's been thought that the spires were really multiples of one, in other words, I'd go multiples of one or eight, so I would have eight, here's a positive, I would have seven, six, five, four, three, two, as I follow my spire around, I'll show you with the spiral on it. In other words, here's my positive eight, if I go to the next positive, it's 7. If I go to the next positive, it's 6. If I go to the next positive, it's 5. If I look at the negatives, I've got 8, 7, 6, 5. Okay? So it was thought that the spires were really just showing multiples of 1 and 8. What I found is that they're doing something completely... Well, they are showing multiples of 1 and 8, but what I found is actually, I think, a more significant relationship and that is between each family number group that I have in each given color, so I've got reds, I've got greens, I've got blues, they're creating a doubling circuit that's wrapping all the way around. So in other words, if I started with my nine here, if I go follow the spire to my next red one, it's going to be six. Now I know the next red one I connect with is going to be a six too, which it is, six. Now I know the next one I reach is going to be 9. 9. Okay, next one's going to be 3. 3. Okay, next one's going to be 6. But you won't see it here, but it would align exactly with the 6. And it's going to end up wrapping around and crossing over in multiple spires that are really doubling circuits, traveling all the way over the surface. I'll show you another example. Here I'll start with an 8. We know our doubling circuits, 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. So here I'm starting with an 8 just so it's easier to count. Okay, 8, go to my next blue, following the spire. 7, next blue. 5, okay, next blue. 1, next blue. 2. So in other words, there's another doubling circuit going all the way over. These are interlaced doubling circuits that have a sequence. They're firing in a trinary sequence and they're creating doubling circuits spiraling over the doubling circuits. I can not only show this pattern in the nested vortices, but I can also show it on the surface skin of the torus itself. Let me show you by doing it myself so you know I'm not just fudging it. Okay, so I'm going to make the same pattern that I had here. Notice here, um, notice here that these are mirrors of each other that they show up the same, and always I have the same numbers in quadrature. So I have a 5, a 5, a 5, a 5, a 1, a 1, a 1, a 1. So these number sequences, the doubling sequences that are overlaid over top of each other are all spiraling into the center. This is how you create an electrical venturi. It comes from multiple circuits allowing these nested vortices to sequence. If you just have one wrap going all the way around, you're just going to have one long sequence of vortices. The numbers will never align, and you'll never have a sequence. Let me show you. I've started here with a 9. We're going to call this one a positive 9. Okay? Positive 9 right now. Now, I'm just going to follow the pathway of my spire, which you, anybody, you know, you just have to do the work yourself to find it, but I'm, you can put this work to the test. Okay? So I'm going to follow to where my next... 396 family number group. I know I'm going to have to go over 3. 1, 2, 3. So that was a 9. Now I know this is going to be a 6. Okay, and it's going to be a negative 6. Okay, because I'm creating a doubling circuit. So with my 396 number group, the pattern is 396693. 396693. Three, three. So I got 9, 6, 1, 2. This is going to be a 6 as well. I'll write it upside down. This one's going to be a positive 6. So I'm going positive, negative, positive. Okay, so 9, 6, 6. This is going to be a 9. Now it's going to be a negative 9. And I'm going to go 3, positive.
positive 3. Okay, and here I'm going to be off the page. All right, so you can see anyway along one spire I've made a doubling circuit. Now does it connect? Well, let's see. We know that uh, from either judging by our multiples of 5 along the circuit, which I'm just saying anytime you see multiples of 5 or multiples of 1 or multiples of any number, all it's really showing you is interlaced doubling circuits. So I know if my 9, I know if I've got a positive 9 here, I'm going to have a positive 9 here. I can know that by counting the nested vortices. For instance, I have a positive 9 here. I know if I go over, let's see, if I go over 1, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, that's going to align, no, I'm sorry, I should go 1, 2, 3, where am I? Um, Okay, one, two, three. Yes, that's aligning over my next positive vortice. So I can count by going one, two, three. I know it's going to be aligned over the next one here. Go one, two, three, it's going to be aligned. So I can count the nested vortices and know exactly what number is going to come out on the other side, as long as I know how many increments are on my horizontal and vertical. Again, we're working with 36 and 18 here. I'll talk you through how all the sequences go. So I know there's a positive 9 here. Let's continue with my doubling circuit. So I know if I go 1, 2, this is going to be a negative 6. Okay? Uh, 1, 2, positive 6. 1, 2, negative, I'm sorry, where am I? 9, 6, 6, negative 9. 9, 1, 2, and then this is going to be 3 positive. Okay? And then that's going to keep going around. So again, I know if I go 180 degrees, it's going to be the same number. This is what you're actually seeing when you look at these spires as in the winding of the coil. So I can do it from here. 9, 1, 2, negative 6. Notice it's not breaking my pattern. 1, 2, positive 6. Still not breaking my pattern. 1, 2, negative 9, which is not breaking my pattern. 1, 2, positive 3. Okay, so I, now I can see that there's this interlaced doubling circuit. All right, um, let's try another one, and then I'm just going to fill these in because this will take a long time if we do it, you know, one by one. So I've got my positive 9 here, so I know now this is going to be my positive 8. How do I know that? Well, I know I'm going to have multiples of 1 this way, or multiples of 8. I also can tell, again, by checking the horizontal equator line. If I have a 9 here, I should count over. There should be an 8 directly lined up vertically with this 8, and there should be an 8 nested vortice on the underside of this, mirroring this one. And it's going to be on this circuit right here. As it comes through under here, it's going to mirror that 8. Okay, so let's try it with 8. So I got positive 8. I know I'm going to have, let's see, 1, 2. This is going to be negative, let's see, 7. Yeah. And then I'm going to go 1, 2, positive 5. Okay, 1, 2, 3, um, negative 1. One, two, and positive two. Okay, so I ended up here on the two. Let's try to fill this in though. I got two. I'm gonna go four. No, I'm sorry. This should be a one. Two, one, five, seven, eight, four. Notice here, I still got six, seven, six, five. My multiples of one aren't breaking. I know this is gonna be a four now. Because I got six, five, four, three, so I can go ahead and fill these in. And I still got my doubling circuit. So let me show you how they work. Let me just fill it in. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. See, that was already there. Didn't never break there. I know it's gonna be nine, six, six, nine, three. Um, let's see, nine, one. This is gonna be a negative two, four, eight, seven. Bye.